Welcome back to Metaphor Math, and we're solving problem 1a in this video, and in problem 1 they're asking us to verify that the following are metric spaces. And I like to think of a metric as a notion of distance. It's, it's, a, it's a rule that assigns to each pair of elements in a set, and this could be any set, it doesn't just have to be the real numbers. So it's a rule that assigns to each pair of elements in any set a real number that satisfies the following four properties. So this rule satisfies the following four properties for each pair of numbers um, in that set, or for all numbers in that set. So, in order to verify that this is a metric right here, that this is a metric, we need to show that it verify or that it satisfies all four of these properties. So let's do that. So if, let's start with property one. So we need to show that dx dy, these, these vectors, these, these are in tuples, so I'm just going to write them as vectors. For each pair of vectors, the distance between them, as defined, where the distance is defined like this, is strictly greater than or equal to zero. So we know that the distance between them is equal to the sum from i equals zero to n of the different, the absolute value of the differences of each of the corresponding components of that, these vectors. Um, and we also know the following fact. We know that xi minus yi is strictly greater than or equal to zero for all i. Because xi and yi, for all i, are real numbers, since this is an n-tuple. We're dealing with n-tuples of real numbers, so xi minus yi must be a real number. And we know that the absolute value of any real number is strictly greater than or equal to zero for all real numbers. So we know that this absolute value of xi minus yi is going to be strictly greater than or equal to zero for all i. And the sum, the sum of a bunch of elements that are greater than or equal to zero must be greater than or equal to zero. So we can say the following, the sum from, for all the i, and actually this is i from zero, from one, this is actually i equals one to n, of xi minus yi, the absolute value, is going to be strictly greater than or equal to zero, because each of these xi minus yi's are strict, the absolute values of xi minus yi's are strictly greater than zero or equal to zero. So therefore, the sum of a bunch of things, again, the sum of a bunch of things that are greater than or equal to zero must be greater than or equal to zero. So we've satisfied, we, we've proven that this metric satisfies property one. So now we need to prove that it satisfies property two. And property two states that if the distance between P and Q is equal to zero, then, that, then this is an, that's equivalent to, that is to say, the distance between P and Q equals zero if and only if P is equal to Q for all P and Q in the set on which the metric is defined. So, we need to prove this both directions. We need to prove if the distance between P and Q is equal to zero, then that means P is equal to Q, and then we need to prove if P is equal to Q, then that means the distance between P and Q is equal to zero. So let's do that for our metric, for our metric for the n-tuples where, with the, where the, the distance is defined like this. So let's do that. So for two, let me change colors here. For two, let's first go this direction, where we suppose, we first suppose that the distance between, the distance between x and y is equal to zero. We, then our goal here is to show that x is equal to y. And for two vectors to be equal to each other, if x is equal to y, we need to show that's the same as saying, this is an if and only if statement, if x is equal to y, then xi is equal to yi, each of the components are equal um, for all i, for all i. So we need to show that x i is equal to yi for all i. So, oh, by the way, this is an if and only if statement, so if xi is equal to yi for all i, then that means that the vectors are equal. We define equivalence of vectors in this way. So, if the distance between x and y is equal to zero, then that implies that the sum from i equals one to n of xi minus yi is equal to zero, because this is how we define the distance between x and y with this sum. Okay, so if this is equal to zero, then let's suppose, by contradiction, suppose, suppose that there exists, suppose that there exists an i such that xi is not equal to yi. Well, if xi is not equal to yi, then this implies that xi minus yi is strictly, or is not equal to zero. 
is not equal to zero. And this implies that the absolute value of xi minus yi is strictly greater than zero. Because remember, the absolute value of xi minus yi, the absolute value of any number, is equal to zero if and only if that number is equal to zero. So since this number is not equal to zero, then that implies that the absolute value of this guy is going to be strictly greater than zero. Remember, the absolute value of any number is greater than or equal to zero for all a and r. So we can say the following. We can say the following, that if that means that if there exists an i such that xi is not equal to yi, then the absolute value of xi minus yi for that i in which we're saying exists is strictly greater than zero. But this implies, since all of these guys, remember, since all of these guys for all i are either greater than or equal to zero, this implies that the sum, if there's, if there's at least one whose, different, whose absolute value, the, difference, the, the absolute value of the difference is strictly greater than zero, then that means that the sum has a value that's strictly greater than zero. Because, because all of, again, all of these xi minus yi's are either equal to zero or strictly greater than zero. So if just one is strictly greater than zero, then the whole sum is strictly greater than zero. So, so we arrive at a contradiction because if we were to suppose that there exists an i such that xi is not equal to yi, then by the sequence of uh, Im implications, then we arrive at the conclusion that the sum of xi minus yi is strictly greater than zero. So therefore, they can't possibly exist because we, we were supposing that in this, in this part of the problem where we're going this direction first and are proving our if and only if statement, we're first supposing that dx, dy, or excuse me, dx and y, the distance between x and y is equal to zero, which implies that the sum of the, abs the differences of the, the absolute value of the differences of xi minus yi for all i is equal to zero. Excuse me, yes, for, for, all, for i is equal to 1 to n. And if we were to suppose that there exists an i such that xi is not equal to yi, then we, we contradict this statement that, that the sum of all of these guys is equal to 0. Therefore, there can't possibly exist an i such that xi is not equal to yi. Therefore, xi is equal to yi for all i. And this implies, this implies, that, we're, this implies that each component of the vector, each component of the vector is equal to each corresponding component of the y vector, each component of the x vector is equal to each corresponding component of the y vector, which implies, by definition of vector equality, the vector x is equal to y, which is what we wanted to show. So now we're going to go the other direction. We're going to go the other direction where we where we suppose suppose we're going this direction. Suppose now, suppose now that x is equal to y, the vector x is equal to y. Now we want to show, now we want to show that the distance between x and y is equal to zero. So if the vector x is equal to the vector y, then this implies that xi is equal to yi for all i, by definition of vector equality. Each, each corresponding component of x, or all the components of x are equal to their corresponding components in y. So therefore, xi minus yi is equal to zero which implies that the absolute value of xi minus yi is equal to zero. Remember, the absolute value of a is equal to zero if and only if a is equal to zero. So the absolute value of xi minus yi, since xi minus yi is equal to zero, then therefore the absolute value is equal to zero. And therefore, the sum, of, this, is, this is for all i, so, so the sum of a bunch of zeros, because xi minus yi, the absolute value of xi minus y is equal to zero for all i, so the sum of a bunch of zeros from i equals 1 to n is equal to 0, which implies, and this is how we defined our distance, which implies that dx, this is how we defined our distance between x and y, the vectors x and y, this, this implies that the distance between x and y is equal to 0. Okay, so we've satisfied, we've proven both directions of this if and only a statement, so we've proven property 2. So let's clear the board to prove property 3. Let's clear the board to prove property 3. We want to prove, check off one and two here. We want to prove, let me change colors to purple. We want to prove that dx dy is equal, so excuse me, not dx dy, the distance between x and y is equal to the distance between y and x. This looks like, this is sometimes called the symmetry property. So let's do this. So this is, I'll say we want, we want this. We want this to happen. Okay, so let's do this. So 
the distance between x and y is equal to the distance between y and x. So we know that the distance of x and y is equal to the sum of xi minus yi, the absolute value of xi minus y from i equals 1 to n. And I'm going to let us know the following fact. The absolute value of a minus b is equal to the absolute value of b minus a. And let me kind of give you a sense of how this argument goes for why we can prove that this is true. I mean, I think, I think it's obvious that it's true because we're familiar with absolute values, but let's kind of prove, we, we, we want to be careful in our proof here. So, the absolute value of a minus b is equal to a minus b if a minus b is strictly greater than zero. Remember, absolute value of a is equal to a if a is greater than zero. Absolute value of a is equal to zero if a is equal to zero. Absolute value of a is equal to negative a if a is strictly less than zero. That is to say, if a is negative. So, if, if a minus b is strictly greater than zero, this implies that negative a minus b is strictly less than zero. And negative a minus b is the same as b minus a. So b minus a is strictly less than zero. That implies that b minus a is equal to, the absolute value of b minus a is equal to, in the case where a minus b is strictly greater than zero, that implies that b minus a, since b minus a is strictly less than zero, so if the argument in the absolute value is strictly less than zero, then that implies that negative b minus a, this, this, this absolute value of b minus a is equal to the negative b minus a, since b minus a is negative, which is equal to a minus b. And so this is the argument for the case where a minus b is strictly greater than zero, and there's a similar argument for the case where a minus b is strictly less than zero and a minus b is equal to zero. So that's kind of how the argument goes and that to prove that a, the absolute value of a minus b is equal to b minus a. So in this case, b minus a is equal to a minus b, and since a minus b is strictly greater than zero, this is equal to the absolute value of a minus b. So we've proven for the case that a minus b is strictly greater than zero that b minus a is equal to a minus b. And again, it's a similar proof for when a minus b is strictly less than zero and when a minus b is equal to zero. Okay, so we can say the following, that xi minus yi, because of this fact, because of this fact, we can say the following, xi minus yi is equal to yi minus xi for all i. So therefore, the sum from i equals 1 to n of xi minus yi is equal to the sum of yi, the absolute value of yi minus xi from i equals 1 to n. And that's the same as saying that the distance, that's the same as saying the distance between x, x and y is the same as the distance between the vectors y and x. And we've done it, we've proven property three. So now we're on to the usually the hardest property to prove, which is otherwise known as the triangle inequality. So we wanna prove this fact right here. So let's do that, let me clear the board. Let me clear the board to get ready for this. Okay, so I'm gonna let you know of a, of a kind of a clever trick that's commonly used to prove these triangle inequalities in cases of when we're dealing with absolute values between real numbers. So check this out. If I have, if I have points P, Q, and R, these are vectors, and if I have the following inequality, check this out. So I have PI minus RI, that's the same as PI minus QI plus QI minus RI, because minus qi plus qi is just zero, so I'm just adding zero, so it doesn't change the value of what's inside the argument, the argument of the inequality. So we're good here, where this, is, this equality holds because I'm just adding zero. But look at this. By properties of inequality, we can say the following. This is equal to pi minus qi, and I can add parentheses here, plus qi minus ri, because addition is associative. And then I can say the following. Look at this. By this property here of inequality, we can say the following. This is kind of our point A, and this is our point B. So we can say, we can say that this is less than or equal to the absolute value of pi minus qi, 
plus the absolute value of qi minus ri. And this property always holds. This property always holds. So it holds for all i. For all i. So check this out. Remember, remember, look at this. We, we have to remember the following fact. Let's remember the following fact. I'll put it in red here. I'll put it in red. A, if A is less than or equal to B, and C is less than or equal to D, then A plus C is less than or equal to B plus D. And this follows, this follows from, I have a proof of, of if A is strictly less than B and C, C is less than or equal to D, then A plus C is strictly less than B plus D. And so the proof for this follows very easily from the proof for this. So we can say the following. Since this holds for all i, since this holds for all i, since, let me, let me write this, let me write this in white here. Since pi minus ri is less than or equal to pi minus qi plus qi minus ri, because remember, pi minus ri is equal to this, which is equal to this, which is less than or equal to this guy. So, pi minus ri is less than or equal to, to pi minus qi plus qi minus ri, all in absolute values, for all i. So that means that the sum, that the sum by, by an extension of this property here, by an extension of this property, to arbitrary numbers of a, b, c, d's, and, and so on, that the sum of pi minus ri from i equals one to n, absolute in absolute values, this is in absolute values, is less than or equal to the sum of pi minus qi plus qi minus ri from i equals one to n. And this, this sum right here, this sum on the right hand side, that's the same as that's the same as i equals one to n of pi minus qi plus the sum of qi minus ri from i equals one to n. Remember it's easy to convince yourself that if I have the sum of a plus b from a i plus b i from i equals one to n, that's the same as saying this is equal to the sum of ai from i equals n, 1 to n, plus the sum of bi from i equals 1 to n. We have the same situation going on over here. We have the same situation going on over here. So look at what we just did. This implies, this is the distance, this is the distance between p and r. So p comma r in vector form. And this is the distance between p and q right here, this, this sum is the distance as, we defi as, they, as they have defined it. So the distance between P, Q, plus, and this is the distance between Q and R, plus the distance between Q and R. And look at this, we've done it. We've proven, we've proven the triangle inequality for all, for arbitrary P, Q, and R. So for any P, R, and for any vectors P, Q, and R, the triangle inequality for this, for the way that they've defined this, vec this metric holds and we've done we've done we've proven that this metric satisfies all four properties of a metric so we've we've completed the problem